Christopher Columbus was a Greek prince, and his real name was Nicholas Ypsilantis from the Greek island of Chios. At least, that was the title of a book written by a Greek author in 1937. However, if Columbus was not the first Greek to set foot on American soil, then certainly the Greek sailor John Grigo, a member of Columbus' crew, deserves that honor. The first Greek settlement in America was established in Florida by a Scottish doctor and his Greek-born wife. Under misleading pretenses, Andrew Turnbull imported nearly 1,500 Greek laborers to work his swampy, disease-infested indigo plantation. The workers were treated worse than slaves, and they soon rebelled. Within a very few years, the colony of New Smyrna was deserted. Many of the Greeks escaped to St. Augustine, Florida to start a new life. During the 1820s, the Greek War of Independence left Greece in political and economic turmoil. After the war, living conditions continued to deteriorate. In 1897, war with Turkey, accompanied by extensive crop failures, provided the final push for a 20-year Greek exodus during which 500,000 Greeks came to America. In 1924, America closed the door to any more massive immigration. Until 1965, there was a quota of just 308 Greek immigrants per year. The immigrants, once in America, still found life very difficult, but not hopeless. Unable to speak English, the Greeks clung together as a matter of course. A number of institutions, organizations, and causes gave coherence and direction to these early Greek immigrants. The Greek Orthodox Church preserved the familiar ritual and calendar while providing Greek language education to the children. Greek language newspapers, The Atlantic, for example, founded in 1894, kept the Greek community informed about events in both their new country and in the old. The Balkan War of 1912 aroused strong nationalistic emotions and thousands of Greek Americans returned to Greece to help fight the Turks. A hundred Greeks from Fitchburg were among these patriots. Two new defensive organizations, AHEPA and GAPA, were formed and devoted themselves to the task of assimilating and educating their members in the nature of American democracy. As the young men made their way in the American system and began to save money, they often sent back to Greece for their brides. Many courtships were carried on by mail and an exchange of photographs. 
Most of the early Greek immigrants settled in New York, Chicago, and Boston. They entered various service occupations which they soon made into their own businesses. Some headed west to work in the Chicago stockyards or in the rapidly expanding railroads. A few even became farmers. From these humble beginnings, Greeks soon took on important positions in American life. Solon Vlasto, founder of the first Greek language paper, The Atlantic. Elia Kazan, Oscar-winning motion picture director. Thomas Pappas, a top executive with Standard Oil of New Jersey. Harry Petrakis, a respected novelist. Dr. George Papanicolo, developer of the widely used PAP test for cancer. Maria Callas, one of the world's foremost operatic sopranos. Telly Savalas, well-known film and TV actor. Milt Pappas and Alex Karras, top professional athletes. Michael Dukakis, twice elected governor of Massachusetts. Paul Songus, Democratic senator from Massachusetts. Ike Pappas, respected network television reporter. And Fitchburg's own Dr. George Stephanides, scholar and author. There is also a contemporary side to Greek immigration. When Greece fell under a military dictatorship in 1967 to 1974, nearly 75,000 Greeks, including actress Melina McCoury and others, fled to the United States as exiles. Some returned to Greece later. Many remained in the U.S. At the turn of the century, Fitchburg was a boom town. Its mills and factories had become strong magnets for immigrants from many lands. The Greeks, too, were drawn by this energy, but factory work was not to their liking. One Greek immigrant recalled life in a cotton mill as frightening me as nothing else in my life. No one had ever given me any idea of the noise or the size of the machines. Instead, Greeks became small business operators. Beginning as peddlers, they sold fruit, vegetables, and even fish from door to door for a number of years. Among them, Simeon Phanos, the first Greek settler in Fitchburg, and William Candianis. As they prospered, they sent passage money back to Greece so that their families could join them in America. Peddling soon led to the establishment of businesses in permanent locations. Cleghorn, as well as other parts of the city, contained a great variety of Greek-run establishments. Among these were Fred Bickelis Candy and Ice Cream Store next to the Strand Theater. The Anastas and Nikolaou Fruit Stand at the American House. Here, Chris Dilopoulos also had his shoeshine parlor. The Mann Brothers Market, which was bought by the Karras Brothers in 1930. It stayed in operation until December 1975. George Stangus Shoeshine Parlor on Day Street. Anastas Ice Cream Parlor in Depot Square not only had a magnificent marble fountain, but it had the best ice cream in New England as well. Although Greek men preferred running their own businesses and usually only worked in factories long enough to capitalize their ventures, the Greek women had no such option. Fitchburg Yarn employed so many Greek women 
that even the employees' rules were printed in the Greek language. As more Greek immigrants arrived in Fitchburg, two other important institutions were quickly established. One was the Cafeneum, where Greek men gathered after work to hear news of the community, talk politics, speak in their native tongue, and enjoy a cup of thick Greek coffee. At one time, four coffee houses served the community. By 1950, assimilation had taken its toll and the last Cafeneia disappeared. The other institution was more enduring and affected all members of the Greek community. It is the Greek Orthodox Church. Early services were held in a variety of locations. By 1919, the Greek community had purchased land on the corner of Caldwell and Main Street, the heart of the Greek community. By October 23, 1921, enough money had been raised to lay the cornerstone. The church was completed and dedicated in July 1922 with Reverend Christakis as its priest. During the history of the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church, a number of able priests served the parish, but Father John Michalides provided strong leadership and support for nearly three decades, from 1928 to 1958. His work helped to transform the Greek immigrants into Greek Americans. Today, the parish still flourishes under the able spiritual leadership of Reverend David Wright. In 1971, on the occasion of its 50th anniversary, Archbishop Yakovos, primate of the Greek Orthodox Church, visited the Fitchburg Greek Church. He presented the Medal of St. Paul to Harry Georgios and posthumously to Peter S. Nikitas. In addition to spiritual support and the activities of a fine church school, many clubs and organizations also originated in the church. The women of the Ladies' Hope Society, who tirelessly contribute time and effort to support the activities of the church and school. This group started in 1922 as the Elpis Society, with Mrs. William Candianis as its first president. The Fitchburg Ahepa chapter and its women's organization, the Daughters of Penelope. The Sarantos D. Vicolis chapter number 266 was organized in 1930. Apart from social events, its primary function was to aid the education and assimilation of Greek Americans. There was also the Greek American Progressive Association, GAPA, which promoted American ideals while preserving the Greek culture. Other important groups were the Young Men's Hellenic Order, the Sons of Pericles, the Men's Fraternal Club, and of course, an active parent-teacher association. Today, the church continues as an active center of community life. Its success is in part due to the work of its dynamic board of directors. Despite their lack of formal education and their background of poverty, first-generation Greek immigrants quickly understood the mechanisms of achieving success in America, hard work, and above all, a good education. Second and third generation descendants of the early immigrants soon achieved remarkable success in many areas of American life. Their endeavors include medicine, 
law, education, business, government, public service, engineering, and the arts. Fitchburg Greek Americans are proud of their accomplishments. Americans also understood that freedom of choice and opportunity do not always come without sacrifice. They gave to America as much as they received. Throughout America's wars, Greek American men and women fought for their beliefs and their way of life. Some never returned from these wars.
But Greeks cannot survive on work and sacrifice alone. Over the years, they entertained themselves and the city with a variety of events. Today, the Greek community of Fitchburg celebrates its unique heritage. Members of the community are proud to be Americans, but they are also proud to be descendants of the early Greek immigrants. They had a dream of America, a dream that continues to live in the Greek Americans of today. Oh, my.
Μου 